I'm Francesca Rudkin and I'm delighted today to be talking to photographer and film director Timothy Greenfield Sanders. Timothy's latest film is a must see. It is compulsory viewing as far as I'm concerned. It's a documentary called Toni Morrison, The Pieces I Am and it's a film that examines the life and work of this literary giant. Timothy, welcome so much. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. First of all, I have to say thank you so much for this film. It's an incredible subject presented in such a revealing and thoughtful and thought-provoking manner. I imagine when you decided you wanted to make this film, it would have been quite a daunting task? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, luckily, uh, Tony Morrison and I have been friends for, uh, had been friends for 38 years. I, I first met ah. her in 1981 when uh, she sat for me uh, as, for a portrait. And uh, that began a long, long, long friendship that really, I think, was so significant part of my life. So even though you knew each other really well, was it easy to get her to agree to, to participate in this documentary? I would not say easy. Uh, <laughs> Tony... It never allowed a biography to be written about her. She would she wouldn't write an autobiography, and I approached her about uh, six or seven years ago with the idea, and she didn't say no, which I took as a yes, <laughs> and and I felt that the door was open. So we started to talk about what it would require of her. I think her biggest concern was it would take time away from her own writing. And once I assured her that it wouldn't, and, and we kind of talked about what I wanted to do, uh, she ultimately agreed to let me make this film about her life, which is really a biography of her uh, that uh, was so fortunate to have. Because you get the feeling she's actually a very private person. I love the story um, that she tells about when Oprah Winfrey rang her, and the first thing she can think of is not, oh, Oprah Winfrey's calling me, but how did she get my number, you know? <laughs> yes, it, Tony's very private, and I think that comes with being so famous that you have to kind of have two persons, uh, one the private one and one who's very much the public figure that people know. And I, I think what's special about the film is that you're seeing the private Tony, the, mm. the Tony that I know and the Tony that her friends know. She's laughing. She's enjoying the interview. She's being very open. Uh, she's not as guarded as you'd expect someone who's as private as she. She talks to the camera, to Timothy, which creates such an intimate experience for the viewer you know, I, I felt like I was in the room with her, um, which yes. is which is really special. We, and as you say, you 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 know her. You knew she could do that. Was that the way that you felt was best to get her to communicate to us? You know, I I took a risk, which was that only Tony is talking directly to camera, and that the other interviewees, Angela Davis. Uh, you know, Sonia Sanchez, Oprah, et cetera, all of the others are, are talking kind of off camera. So they're mm. not looking into camera. And because I wanted it to be Tony, who was really the center and Tony, who's telling her own story. And I, I had never seen that in a documentary where you could, where you do that. And I just decided that, you know, I'm going to risk it because if you, if it didn't work, you're stuck with those interviews and, Maybe it's awkward or weird or something, but in, in fact, it, it was wonderful because it really makes Tony feel like, it makes you feel like Tony's talking to you, as, as you very well said. And as you say, she's speaking and she's talking about herself in her own words and, and talking very openly and honestly um, about the work and the themes in her work as well, which, which comes through very strongly in the film. Right, and and you know, Tony, I think enjoyed it. I think when you watch this film, you get the sense that she had a good time. Doing yeah, you the do. Interview. Yeah, you do. Yeah. And, do which you... is a kind of wonderful thing because it's very, it's you know, it's some fun, funny stuff, but it's also some very heavy, deep stuff. And uh, she 
was she you know i think tony understood the the power of film and you know that from her career when she talked about in college being in theater and you know she was aware of the power of the visual arts and things like that so i think she knew there was an audience be different maybe from the mm. audience that just that reads her books mm. Mm. Uh, I don't know for sure that that's, you know, was in her head, but I have a sense that it was, just from knowing her. Timothy, did Tony have a chance to see the film before she passed away this year? She did. I took it to her uh, and sat with her. When we got into Sundance, we had to finish uh, in time to, to screen there, and I took it up to her house up in the Hudson River. And she watched the film for two hours, and then she turned to me and she said, "I like her." <laughs> oh, how gorgeous! <laughs> Which is marvelous, just marvelous. <laughs> you know, I learned an awful lot, Timothy. I was—I'm actually embarrassed to admit that I didn't know that Toni Morrison was an editor at Random House. I had no idea how hands-on she was at encouraging and nurturing other authors. Yeah, uh, you know the. the the easy take on Tony is that she won the Nobel Prize mm. for literature and that she wrote from an African-American viewpoint. But there's so many hats that she wore. I think her career at Random House, where she nurtured all these great other writers and brought them in and got them published, you know, that, that's a whole documentary in, on, in its own. Uh, uh, her career in it, Princeton and Yale and Harvard and all of the great universities where she taught, particularly Princeton, though, uh, is is another you know full story in itself. And on top of that, you know, raising two sons and being a single mother, a lot, a lot of hats. And as you mentioned, you've known her for a very long time. But was there anything that you learned about Tony in the making of this film, a revelation or a surprise? I think when you're friends with someone, you tend to, the relationship tends to be around meals and events you go to. In my case, I took pictures of her a lot, so she was in my studio often for portraits over the years. But you don't, you know, I knew she was at Random House, but I wasn't aware of what, it, what the extent of her accomplishment there. So I think when you start to research someone's life, it's a very, it's very different than, than the kind of person you know. Absolutely. And it does feel, Timothy, like an awful lot of research did go into this project. Oh, it took four and a half years to make this film. I mean, it was so much research and so much, uh, you know, footage to deal with. Uh, I think uh, Johanna Giebelhaus, our editor, I think she told me it was about 55 hours of, of footage just uh, from the interviews we shot to all the archival stuff that we brought in to look at and, the, and then of course almost a thousand photographs and artworks you know the uh, I'm sure you're gonna want to ask me about the artwork in the film because it's such an important part of it no absolutely I was going to yeah just talk to you about I, I mean obviously as you say there are the interviews you've shot but so much more material at, at your disposal which is really exciting but as you say can be quite overwhelming when you're trying to pull it back into a into a feature documentary you know, it's you. You get overwhelmed with how much you have to look at. And today, of course, because you can go online and and see what's out there to a great extent, you couldn't do that in the earlier days. When I first made my film on Lou Reed, you'd send out a researcher to get you, you know, literally uh, mm. chromes and slides and pictures that they bring into the editing room. <laughs> And today you can see almost anything uh, on online, but you, you still have to license it. You still have to pay for it and all that. But at least it's out there. So you're 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 swamped almost with material. Tell me about the artwork. You know, one of the joys of the film, I think, is that we we often cut to a painting. And I, I didn't see that in, a, in other documentaries, and I kept thinking, why Why not? You know, why couldn't you cut to uh, Kara Walker or Carrie James Marshall or Jacob Lawrence? 
uh, to kind of bring that art into the into the film and also to say something. And I think we started to do it early on in the in the editing, and it was just so much fun to kind of think about what painting would grow here instead of what photograph. Mm. And it opened up the film in a beautiful way. I think if you, when you see the film, when Tony talks about the her parent, her family's migration from Alabama to Ohio, we use the paintings of Jacob Lawrence that are called the Migration Series. And those are the perfect images there to kind of give you a sense of what that was like of uh, African Americans getting on trains and leaving the South and moving north to, to you know, in those days. Um, I also think that there's so much. Uh, I, I also think that Tony means so much to so many black artists, and this mm. is a way to kind of connect them to the film, and in a way to say thank you to Tony. Yeah. I, I, I. It's the one thing that really stuck with me from the the film, and I, I imagine it as something which no one, I would like to think no one would ever dare say today, but it's when Tony first started writing and people, reviewers and critics and commentators would say, oh, look, when she starts writing about white people, she's going to take off. She's going to be amazing. And so, I mean, I still kind of can't believe that was said. That, that's you're referring to the New York Times uh, review, of, yeah. uh, which was you know so outrageous. Um, and at the time, though, that was probably perfectly normal thing for most white people reviewing a book to to say they wouldn't even understand how how racist it was and how outrageous it was. Um, you know, I think it's it's. Uh, it's beautifully captured in the film with Sarah Griffin talking about, you know, an Irish writer would never be asked why he only writes about <laughs> Irish people. <laughs> exactly. It's also a reminder, I think, Timothy, why this, why this film is so important for people to see, why, um, you know, Toni Morrison um, and her story and her work um, is so relevant today. I think the themes that... Tony explored early in her career and throughout her career are as important today as they were 30, mm. 40 years ago. And, mm. you know, race and identity and her ability to write from a black experience, you know, she talks about avoiding the white gaze and uh, th those issues and the, and the, the, and what Tony accomplished in her writing are as lively and important today, you know, as ever. So I think, I think you're looking at it really one of the greatest artists with a capital A of the last century and this century. Uh, she's a monumental figure. And after spending time with her, Timothy, the first thing I went and did was go back to my bookshelves and try and find her books to read. You know, uh, you watch this sure. film and you immediately just go, I'm going to go back and reread that. I'm going to find that one. I'm going to find that one. And I don't know if that's what the intention, you know, one of your intentions with this film was, but um, it very much drives you back to her books. I, I think it does. I think the film makes you want to read, read Tony because either you've read her and want to reread it or you feel you missed out on something and, and it's an opportunity now. Timothy Greenfield Sanders, thank you so much for your time today and thank you for your beautiful movie. We're thrilled to be playing it here on Rialto Channel. Thank you very much. It's a joy to talk to you.